Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question, and it's a good one. So the question in question was, Frederick, have you ever used your programming knowledge to prank somebody? So let's get into it. Well, I'm sorry to admit that yes, I have. Um, not as often as maybe I could have. I've had some fun thoughts about things that could have been fun to try out. But uh, yes, I have a few examples, but I'm going to scope it down to just a few. Uh, the, the, le the less horrible ones, well, horrible might be a strong word, but the, 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 the things that I feel comfortable sharing on YouTube at this point in time. So I remember, uh, well, let's start out by having uh, one of my first Java projects uh, back in my university days was basically I was trying to understand how to, because basically one of my most common problems in those days for myself was that uh, I didn't I didn't have the patience like I played a lot of MMO RPG games MMO games right and I didn't have the patience I'm sorry to say to sit there and do the daily stuff I mean go to the exact same place click a bunch of stuff and just farm and do all of this stuff right so I wanted to figure out could I create a bot an automated bot that simulated I mean from for myself I mean I know there are things that you can buy but I wanted to do it myself so I was playing around with the well basically the IO packages in Java where I could uh, and just figuring out like if I could simulate key keystrokes key and stuff of this nature. So I wrote a little program which basically allowed me to input some information. I could set in, put in a string of a key co combination sequence and some times like for how long this was going to take and like how many iterations and how, so forth. And it allowed me to basically simulate key, quick interactions and stuff like that. And then I had this vicious little fun idea where I thought, hmm, it wouldn't it be fun if I did something like uh, control somebody, you know, open somebody, somebody's browser to something fun and then take control over their mouse and their keyboard so they can't click away. And so I did. I wrote a little program and uh, I could never get anybody to click it uh, outside of school. I'll tell you what I did. And this is, a t uh, this is a lesson, and it's also the way that I lost all credibility in my class, but I, I'd like to think that I uh, regained it by the end. But basically nobody in their right mind, I, I sent them this little file that did, I'll explain what it, do, what it did, but I sent it to a bunch of people and nobody clicked it, the, clicked it because they didn't recognize the JAR extension. Go figure, right? If, unless your program is named setup.exe on a Windows machine, they won't click it. Anywho, so I figured, how can I get somebody to run this, just to for fun? And then this magical golden moment appears where in school we have a, you know, a joint project, which basically means that we're now going to learn how to work as a team, as a software team, which means that we, sh we share the same code base. So I included my little program in a bunch of files, pushed that into and just included uh, included all of that in a very small little method at the end of our main function in the program we were making as a team right and then just committed all of that beautiful code so when my co well my classmates uh, ran that code during class uh, well the program ran and the program in essence what it did was to go to lemonparty.org i think that that is you can check that out if you want to and take control over the mouse for about 30 seconds and just they couldn't do sh they couldn't do anything by, by apart from sit there and watch the glory that is that website <laughs> i know that was pretty uh, that that's probably a pr uh, yeah after that uh, not a lot of people like at least they started really shaking my commits because, you know, if they had checked my commits and done a proper, proper code review, that code shouldn't have made it into production. Well, into the master branch. That is one such occasion. Other times I've pranked somebody. I was playing around with some hacking things. I mean, I'm just a rookie hacker. Um, script kiddie level at best. But I did play around with the denial of service attacks for a little while. And I thought it would be pretty fun if I could create this little little thing that just grabbed the public IP address of whoever like the well the public IP address of whoever runs it and sends that to my server somewhere 
so I did. I have a little Raspberry Pi here, which has a little server that just takes in requests, right? And all I did was to create this little file, send it to a friend who um, actually clicked it after a little bit of convincing. I got his IP address and then I set it up through, uh, set up a denial of service uh, attack on him. And he, well, he called me and said, Freddy, I don't know what happened after you uh, sent me this file. My internet just died and I kind of went, <clears throat> yeah. And then I killed it, of course, and explained to him. I mean, it, it, we're talking about a few minutes here and explain what I did. Just as a fun thing. Others, and, the, and I will leave us with one final thing I did, which I felt... I, I, this was before I actually learned how to program well, if, I, if you can call it that, but program at the way I do today. But I did do one thing that was almost honorable, almost white hat level. Probably not, but... I met this woman who had an issue, or rather she suspected that he's an artist, and she had this issue where people... Uh, he, he had water stamped her images and uploaded them to a website, and you, people had the opportunity, of course, buying these. But she had found these images on other websites without the watermark. So she asked me, I mean, is it possible to remove the watermark? And I said, well, yeah, it, it was, it's going to be a big hassle for a lot of the cases to do this, but it is possible to remove it. And she goes, but how can I know if it's my image? And, you know, in, back those, in those days, I didn't really have much of a knowledge about these things. So I said, well, it's a JPEG. I could probably encode a secret file in the data. I mean, it's going to kick up the size of the image by a few kilobytes, but we could actually just put a little stamp or something and then embed that into the image. And then if they steal this image or if you find this image somewhere on the internet, you can un unzip this, uh, the, the, this content. And if there is actually a file hidden inside there, you know it's yours. Said and done, we did. I used a little program to embed a small text file or a small piece of text just stating that like the timestamp and the name of the pre of her her name and a few months later she contacted me and said that yeah she could actually uh, she had found the image and they could actually uh, see that it, she could actually verify that it was her image thanks to that the person who had this image had actually just uploaded it as as was so that was a pretty proud moment i don't actually know if she'd made any legal like uh, progression or anything like that but it was fun to actually to to see it work so those are my cases i've done other other things as well mostly because i like like having fun but it's all in good fun i would never see i'm i, I would not hurt somebody with my programming skill and you should not either learning hacking and using your programming skill for the betterment of mankind that's what i suggest you should do have a great day